Um, da, 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 da. What are some ways that you furthered your knowledge as an ICU nurse? I'm a new grad, nine months into ICU, and I feel like I need to expand my knowledge before applying to CRNA school. Um, okay, so who told you that you need to expand your knowledge? I mean, I, I, under, I love people wanting to grow and learn more. Absolutely, continue to do that. But a 10-year nurse in an ICU does no better in CRNA school than I get, when you graduate than someone who did nine months. I can promise you that because the thing that remains at the end of the day is neither of you know how to give anesthesia. And as a nurse, you can, again, run a propofol drip all day long. That nurse may be better than, at you than figuring out how to set up a, a line or sort of an arterial line set up. That's great. But when you both get into the operating room, both of you do not know how to induce a patient with propofol. So um, keep learning, keep your mindset open, but don't feel like you have to be perfect. That's another thing that I want to, I talked about in the other group. That's important. Um, a lot of people that end up going to CRNA school are very, very type A. I think I'm like type A slash B, but whatever. And they have this baseline of perfection. I must be perfect. I must get a hundred. That does not serve you when you're in an operating room. Because the class, the people that I graduated with, the hundred that they got on that first test really doesn't matter. We're both CRNAs right now. So as you guys go forward in your journey and you're thinking about applying to CRNA school, remember that. Remember that the test, the project, whatever, you could get a hundred on it or you can get an 83 or whatever your school's lowest thing is. When you both graduate and you both pass your boards, none of that matters. So dropping that expectation of perfection will help you because when you get into operating room, it doesn't matter if you're perfect. What matters is that you can handle what your patient throws at you. Your patients don't read the textbooks. You do. So your patient may have all these things that you've read in your book, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't matter because you throw in a surgery, you throw in the weather, you throw in the surgeon's skill, and all these variables have changed everything. So really remind that or remember that. Um, with the COVID-19 pandemic and CRNAs being able to provide care in the ICU as enhanced APRNs, do you think this will change the abilities of CRNAs to be more visible in the unit to manage patients? Um, I, so we, for me, I can speak from personal experience. I don't want to be an intensivist. <laughs> I want to go be in the operating room, um, to be honest. So I don't know going forward in the future if that changes as far as intensivist. I think as far as full practice authority, there's some going to probably be some changes eventually. Um, do you feel CRA school value research experience? Yes. Best types of volunteer experience, medical missions helpful. Um, yeah. So my school had a lot of, it was very, very big on global policy and global health. Excuse me. Um, really big on global health. And so they, they, they took uh, trips, they take trips to Africa every single year. So if you're doing um, a lot of research up front, you'll be able to kind of key in on what's your school values. I really, really want you guys to hear me on that. What does your school value? Do they value numbers? Do you need to have a 4.0 to go to that school? And if you don't have a 4.0, that's not the school for you, right? Does your school value a lot of volunteer experience? And you get to know that by visiting schools, talking to students, networking. You need to figure out what your school values. And again, that goes back to the psychology of it. You could be knocking at the wrong door for a long time and turn around and knock at the one that's actually open for your key and be, be in, right? So um, it's really school dependent. There's, a, there's some work that is involved in cho choosing the right school. Like, so for me, I chose VCU and Duke for a few reasons. One, they both did not require organic chemistry. It was not about to happen. I didn't feel like taking it, right? Two, VCU, I went there for undergrad. I played soccer for the school. I knew it looked good, so why not apply? And I knew it, it was number one program at the time. Um, but I was so confident. That was actually my backup school, right? I applied to Duke because I wanted to, um, I liked the name. Um, it was also high ranking. Um, I knew that anywhere that I go and for whatever future holds for me, I know that I can say Duke, I went to Duke University and a lot of people take a step back. And this is just full transparency, you guys. You guys know I keep it real, right? Um, 
So those are some of the reasons where I chose Duke. And again, I knew what my application looked for. I looked like I visited Duke and I knew what they valued. My whole class was super, super young and they valued tenacity. They not, they value grit. So as a young nurse who has her GRE CCRN in a, nine months, they're like, okay, she can handle this. So it's, what is your, you need to think about what your app, the psychology of it. What does your application look like to these schools? Um, da, 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 this is great content. You're a great human. Thank you, Justin. Um, excuse me. Super interested in the HPSB. I'm assuming you have to qualify um, to enter the Air Force military slash military in general. Any advice or experience in the realm? Yes, you must qualify to enter the Air Force. So anything that disqualifies you from entering the Air Force will disqualify you from entering HPSP um, or being selected. Um, and this would be an entire workshop as far as like making your application look good for HPS because it is very, very different than just nurse and CU school. They require a lot of the th same things, but there's a phone interview, um, two phone interviews. Um, and I also shadowed, I visited an Air Force CRNA before um, like accepting. And also to let you guys know, I was not accepted my first time. I actually applied and was rejected at first. Granted, there's some other things that I think happened, but We'll talk about that in a workshop if you guys are interested in that. Um, yeah, so I applied again and was accepted. And at first I was like, wait, I don't want to go anymore <laughs> for a few reasons. But I decided that I was going to shadow and see and visit another hospital actually and shadow another CRNA to see what it was like. So again, and no, I didn't really tell, tell people this, but um, you have some control over where you are, especially in the Air Force as well. There's only one of six places that you can go as a new CRNA because they want you to get good experience. So uh, they really want, you, they need CRNAs in the Air Force and so they want you to be happy. So they, tr I got my first choice, just so you know. Um, how do you deal with those difficulties or the tension of the OR environment? So I think how you handle stress in your daily life is how you're gonna handle stress in, this, in an operating room. Um, and that's not to say that I don't get stressed. I just know how to reduce my stress. Um, and then when you really think about it, me looking back at CRA school, you are trained to handle the challenging times. That's what you are paid for. Um, there's a common term, and I'm sure you guys are going to hear it, and comment down below if you've heard it before. Now, your anesthesia is 90% chill, calm, and 10% sheer terror you are paid for the 10% of sheer terror. Um, but if you think about it again, there's only so many different things that can happen. It's with your heart and your airway and everything else is really the surgeon. So you are troubleshooting at the same time that all this stuff is going. And as a nurse, you have an amazing nursing gut. I will say that to anybody. That nursing gut that you develop as a nurse, it, it just supersedes everything. I, I stand by that. I swear. So when you are, when I'm sensing something that's happening or I'm looking up the uh, monitor and, or I'm looking over at the drapes and seeing what the surgeon's doing, I can, you can predict a lot of times what could happen, um, but you're following trends and you're watching and you're seeing that, that something is changing on the ventilator. You're making those changes. And so whoop, it happens, you respond. There's only so many ways that you can respond. It's with a medication or a maneuver most often, right? So you get to deal, you feel out what those challenging times may be and you get better at it. And that's what you train for. Don't get me, I'm still nervous. I'm so new to this, not to do this yet, but I get nervous, but it's just, how do you handle those nerves? Um, Tedrick, one of my friends and mentors, he would say that anesthesia, when you are doing anesthesia, you want to look like a duck paddling underwater, right? Just smooth. But if you were to look underwater, pop your head underneath it, you see that duck just going, 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 right? That's, that's anesthesia. Kind of fake it till you make it. Um, do you think it would be beneficial to take a grad level class, such as an AMP course to be a GPA booster to kind of prep grad school in general? Yes. Like you said, Erica, it's very school um, dependent, but I want you to take it a step further. If that's something that you're going to do, maybe contact your school to see if it would be accepted. A lot of times it's not, but you never know. Um, but it, they really focus in some, and you, again, you need to find out what your school values and what 
their admission criteria is. Is it specifically nursing GPA that they care about or overall GPA? Because some people only care about your nursing school, whereas some people take the entire account um, GPA into account. Best way to prepare for interview questions. Um, so I say, and I have a video on my YouTube channel about this. Um, it's about interview questions and how I prepared. So what you want to do is really, I say for rule of thumb for all of them is pick a patient, pick a patient that you remember as being challenging or something that you can discuss and make sure it's particular to your unit. Um, that you can explain and figure out and talk about what you guys did and how you treated it and things that you did. Um, a lot of times in your interviews, there are a lot of personality questions, personality type questions, a lot of emotional intelligence type questions. And there's entire books specifically written about emotional intelligence. Um, that is where you need to focus. You also, I've heard that there are some places that sit you in front of a panel and ask you CCRN questions. So if you want to cover your bases, it's knowing your patient, knowing your patient population, the medications that you use daily, um, the infusions, how they work on a receptor level, and then kind of maybe brushing up on some of the basic CCRN stuff like CVP, hemodynamics, um, stuff like that. If anyone needs a Loris Gasparius video, shoot me a DM. Look, yeah, Jacqueline, this is what I'm talking about. This yeah. is oh. things that you like to snack yeah. on. What? Who's here? Okay, I'll continue. Um, this is what I love about building networks. And this is a this is a networking event. If you guys don't know, this is the stuff that's like networking. When you take opportunities to meet and talk and um, get to know people, this is what it is, right? So, and look what you guys have, some Jacqueline, offering you guys the Laura, Laura Gasparis videos. I think it's just so awesome. Um, so thank you, Jacqueline, for doing that. Um, is there a chance to study you in the future? Absolutely. When we start doing cases again. Um, I know it varies for everyone, but what was the, your method of studying throughout CRNA school that worked best for you? So, so I definitely, I have a YouTube video about this, but um, it's cycling, it's everything. It's sitting down and just listening to a lecture um, and then listening to it again and then taking notes, highlighting, diagrams, recording yourself, talking it out, um, flashcards. I've used every single one of these versions um, while I was in school. So definitely check out the uh, video on YouTube. Um, any do's or don'ts for interviews? I got accepted for an interview at PC's DNAT. Woo! Two up, two down, V8. So the reason I did not go to VCU, just disclaimer, is because I would have had too much fun. So I removed myself from a fun environment. I could have in-state tuition, but I just know myself. My teammates, so some of them still live there. They'd have been like, hey, you should, let's go celebrate Heather's birthday. And I would have been like, yeah, let's go. I'm not studying. So that's why I didn't go to VCU. But um, any do's or don'ts, you need to admit when you do not know something. Because let me tell you how that translates into your practice. There's going to be a time where you are stumped by your patient. Something is happening and you just can't figure it out. Are you too proud to call another CRNA or another anesthesiologist? We'll say CRNA because, you know, are you too proud? Are you willing to put your pride to the side and call for the betterment of your patient? So when you are saying and admitting you do not know, you are telling their faculty that you are not too proud. I remember when it came out of my mouth, I was like, damn it, I am not going to get into the school. And I look back at it now and that's what they wanted me to say. So admit when you do not know. Um, I think that's my best advice. Calm down, be yourself. Don't be flippant, but be yourself. Smile um, and breathe. If you have to, and I also said this in my interview, I said, one second, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I need to take a second. And um, so just be yourself, be a person. Don't be a robot. Um, let's see. When did you start and how did you manage your business while in school? You very particular. Yeah. Oh gosh. So this is an entire ooh, child. Um, I was, I was, I won't say I had sleep as nice because I went to sleep. I think the latest I ever stayed up was like 1 a.m. And I was up careful in spiral. So I found something that, I, okay, so when I started CRNA school, 
I found Amazon, like blue eye glasses on Amazon and I bought them and they helped so much. Oops, someone's still trying to get in it here. Um, they helped, but I did not like the way they looked. And so I started, I actually started emailing or messaging like Warby Parker or and all these other places. I was like, hey, will you guys put blue light frames in your glasses? And all of them said, Warby Parker specifically, specifically just saying, they said, um, we don't see a market for that. No. And so at that time I was like, okay, well, let me see how I can make my own. And I started doing the research about YouTube. YouTube business, YouTube university is the bomb, right? So I just started researching like product chains, supply chains, Shopify, how to make a Shopify page, where to find things, how to communicate with people. Um, and again, in a different workshop, I want I will lay all of this out for you. Um, but for the interest of time, I just want to give you guys a broad answer. Um, and so you buy the product and you figure out what you need to do to package it in the packaging. Are you going to private label, which means make your own um, brand? Are you going to brand your own self? Are you going to sell somebody else? Are you going to drop ship? I wanted to sell my own brand. I wanted to be um, a part of the selection process and um, marketing is something that I also love. So I was able to merge the two together and I wanted to, again, get, there's not a lot of stuff for us, made for us by us. So I wanted to be a part of that. And I wanted to make blue eyeglasses specifically for healthcare providers. And um, you guys check out my reviews. You will see that these are the bomb.com and I wear them all the time. And it's not just because of my products, it's because I'm always on the computer and they're awesome. So when you find a product you, solve pro you can solve problems a lot of times with businesses, or it could be something that you like. But um, solving people's problems is something that's um, really helpful when you're starting a business. Um, I'm sure pretty everyone here wants all the info. You can give more workshops. Okay. <laughs> All-time favorite thing of being a CRNA. The flexibility that allows me to have outside of the operating room. So I'm able to earn money that allows me to pursue entrepreneurship and travel and work smarter, not harder. Um, there's a joke, it's called ABCs of anesthesia. It's airway breathing chair. And um, a lot of people talk smack about anesthesia. You guys heard me talk about it on Instagram a lot. And if you're not following me, it's Aisha underscore CRNA. Um, I talk a lot about it. People always have something a little negative to say um, when they're a little envious. I'm not saying people are envious, but it's a nice gig. Um, you get to sit down when you're working. You're not hunched over a patient, you know, slicing and dicing. Um, we get breaks. We get water breaks. We get lunch breaks. Um, so I chose well. I think I chose well, right? <laughs> um, the CRNAs are just, we're, we're registered nurses, and I know y'all know how nurses are. We're fun. Fun AF, right? So CRNAs are just nurses with more money. <laughs> um, if no choice, would you have moved for school or was that not an option for you? So I did move for school. I moved from Virginia to North Carolina. I, I'm not from North Carolina. Um, I was willing to move anywhere uh, for school. And found the Air Force, what setting do you think you would have worked? Um, I would have worked at a hospital to start, um, to just hone in on general CRNA skills. Um, especially right now, it's apparent that, you know, there's some 1099 or locum tenens people that are struggling for jobs right now. And so I think I made, I would have made a good decision to, to work in a hospital, um, to be a W2 and have insurance paid for by the hospital and things like that. Um, so you don't owe any money for grad school. Oh, no, honey, I do owe money. I owe my first year because I did not get selected in my first year of CRNA school, which has become somewhat of um, a pattern because CRNA school, your first year is typically the most expensive, but we won't, I'm not going to guess, right? Um, but two years uh, um, is better than nothing. And the experience in CRNA uh, in the Air Force, I'm an independent practitioner. I do my blocks. I do... Um, Lines, all of that. So it's worth it to me. Any more questions? Anything? Do you want to see my tiny home? I'm feeling generous. All right. Let's do it. Oops. What did I do? 
guys see me? Okay, thank you, Michelle. <laughs> All right, I guess I, just, I can't see myself. Uh, it disappeared, which is fine. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, so I don't know what I'm showing you. I don't like this. Hold on, let me figure this out. <laughs> um, I'll answer some questions in the meantime. Um, da -da 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 -da. Let me see. Do you guys know how to fix this? Oh, got it. Okay, figured it out. Um, Jackie's question. Let me see Jackie's question. Oh, with everything that's going on regarding COVID, do you think CRNA schools will begin to waive the shadowing requirement? 